Well then, welcome everybody to the uh, the power to make you smile back, pun intended. Uh, so I'm Marnie Stockman, CEO of Lifecycle Insights, and with me, da -da -da, drum roll. I'm Evan Marks. I'm the product owner from the Smileback team uh, inside of Connectwise. Perfect. Um, so we are here today to chat about um, a few things. So first. Hot off the presses is the new integration that Lifecycle Insights has with Smileback. So we're really excited. We um, uh, we've had partner. You know, we take our integration requests from our partners, where we ask what they want to see in Lifecycle Insights. Um, which, for those of you who are who are new and have not heard of Lifecycle Insights before, is a QBR reporting platform. Uh, and a lot of our partners had been asking for to be able to deliver CSAT scores in that conversation. We also have a customer success platform because they really want to track customer success through CSAT. Um, and so the Smileback integration bubbled up as, uh, as the one they wanted next. So we're excited to announce that. Um, but we're not just talking product today. We really want to talk about the power, again, of customer success. So you can see... We'll, we'll do our introductions a little deeper than just our names and titles, uh, kind of the power of business reviews and customer success as they impact um, business reviews, the power of CSAT, uh, some stories of success we have both heard along the way. As a matter of fact, we uh, we had the, almost the same story with two different yeah. people that had told it to us. So we'll definitely share that one. And then I will go in and show what this looks like in Lifecycle Insights so people can see, I think. Smileback partners will recognize immediately what it looks like as they're very familiar with the data, but it's good to see what that looks like in a couple different ways. Um, so Evan, I will let you start first and tell us a bit more about Smileback. Yeah, so Smileback is a customer feedback platform, and it's really the only one that's designed specifically for MSPs. We were founded um, by some people who had been MSP owners, who were very involved in the ConnectWise community in particular. And you know, we ran as an independent company for doing focusing on CSAT for five or six years, uh, working with lots of different partners, not only on ConnectWise Manage, uh, also Autotask and also some of the more general platforms like Zendesk, but mostly ConnectWise Manage partners. Um, you know, we introduced another type of survey, net promoter score, we introduced various reporting, automation, lots of integrations of other platforms leading up to. Lifecycle Insights, the most recent one. And um, about a year ago now, we were acquired by ConnectWise and we're still doing much the same we were doing before, but now with, you know, more insight and integration, I guess, into, you know, into ConnectWise as the largest PSA in the space. That full ecosystem. Yeah, mm, as it, yeah, it's yeah. Good space for sure. Perfect. Um, so we uh, we launched in 2019 as the nerds you're looking for at the ConnectWise IT Nation. <laughs> so here here we are. It was on Halloween. We don't always dress like that. At least that works. <laughs> <us. laughs> um, so on Halloween, we came as the nerds folks were looking for. Um, so I come from the world of customer success, which is why Smileback is near and dear to my heart because I was tracking this for a large ed tech company, um, and. We scale. We learned how to scale customer success and really drive um, raving fans to drive referrals, et cetera, within that space mm -hmm. um, through customer success. So the developers and I, so two of whom are there, um, were out looking for a way that we could transition what we know um, into a new opportunity. And I ran into Alex Farling, who was an MSP, had been for 16 years in Delaware, and um, he and I had played volleyball for years, uh, and I asked if there were any problems in the space, and he said, yes, I spent six hours today cobbling together, that's apparently an industry term, along with all the typical acronyms, um, cobbling together my business review from, and then he threw out those acronyms, PSA, RMM, IT Glue, all these, all these platforms and places, and Excel, and I wasn't confident of the mm. data, I wasn't confident that the business review was strategic. Uh, and it certainly took forever to even attempt to make it look good. So that's how Lifecycle Insights um, became a thing. So um, one of the things that, and this is interesting that you mentioned sort of the ConnectWise ecosystem, is that we are part of the Evolve community, the, the ConnectWise peer groups, and we actually participate 
as part of the solution partner peer group. So the vendors have a peer group as well. Mm -hmm. And we're a part of that. As part of that peer group, um, Paul Dipple came in to talk about um, the slick, the sleek assessment and the um, the other assessments that they do on MSPs and benchmarking, et cetera. And he did not know who we were in the room. We knew who he was, but he had no reason to give this particular presentation to us, right? We were just a part of the bigger story. Um, but part of that bigger story was he said, there are two drivers for MSPs to increase operational maturity. And he said, of those two things, the questions were, uh, what percentage of your clients get true quarterly business reviews and what percentage of your clients are fully aligned to your stack? So of course the QBR and C customer success platform people in the room were cheering because the two things we do are drive quarterly business reviews and help folks align to their stack. Um, and so it was just interesting that that operational maturity goes along with customer success for both the MSP and their clients. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the important tie together, really. Um, so, so here I just said, and what do those things have to do with customer satisfaction? And I thought we could just chat some stories and things that we've seen in this space. As a matter of fact, I'll turn off the slides because I don't think that's a very interesting slide and it's easier for me to, uh, <laughs> to chat when you um, when uh, I'm looking at not just a, a you know a, a thumbnail of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tell me, quarterly business reviews, customer satisfaction. I'd love to hear more about sort of some stories you you have in in your world. Yeah, yeah. The thing that we always talk about in Smile Pack is um, we have these kind of like three pillars really when it comes to customer experience data. You know, the first is collecting it. Obviously, you have to start collecting it. Uh, the second is understanding it. And then the third is acting upon it. So, you know, we obviously think everyone should be collecting customer satisfaction data, but there's no point in, in just getting it, right? You have to understand what are you looking at? You know, what is the importance of it? What is it telling you? And then you've got to actually do something with that. So for me, it's really important that... Um, you use CSAT, MPS, or even if it's some other thing that's you know out there that, that isn't part of say Smileback specifically, you know, you got a reason for doing it and you're gonna do something with it. And what we find is that a really important thing, you know, why like QBRs are so important, why, you know, tools like your own that make reporting on it more consistent and um repeatable and lower effort is so important is it's, it's to help drive constant improvement so you know at getting the first thing to do is just to start gauging how you're doing with your most common type of interaction so for most people that's going to be service tickets and then of course as soon as you get any kind of bad or concerning or even middling feedback from those you know acting upon it following up with that that person trying to put it right but then what's really going to help you get better and what we're always encouraging people to take this next step is like, how do you move beyond just responding to that one initial incident? Well, that means doing things like learning from it, right? Um, and what honestly, what I can talk best about is just what we do in Smileback ourselves, because I was our custom success person before I became a product owner. So I was, you know, responsible and kind of held accountable for our reviews. Um, and anytime we got any kind of bad response from people, the first thing obviously was to make it right with that person as quickly as possible, or at least get in contact with them and find out more, but then also explain to the rest of the company, you know, what happened here and like, what action did we take? Yeah. And then a little bit further along, you know, next weekly or next kind of monthly check and point, look at it again with a slightly more long-term how less of the pain <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and um and think not just what did we do right then in the moment what what can we learn from this you know is there some sort of repeating or underlying reason why this person was unhappy that we can tackle um and if we talk about that 
in context with other things that have happened, do we start to learn something about our service, our product, you know, the information we provide, or maybe just our customers and what their needs and expectations are? So, you know, when you and I were talking about this, I said, if you're going, don't collect the data if you're not going to do something with it. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, I loved your three points, like collect it, understand it, act on it. Yeah. Um, there's so much data available in this world that it's easy to become, they say, um, data rich, information poor. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of data, don't know what I'm doing with it, right? So I think your point of having those three steps as and continuous improvement on those pieces, right? The first time you get data, you go collect it. Um, and it takes a bit to understand what you're looking at and what are actual trends, right? It's easy. When you have a single data point, it's hard to know yeah. if there's any yeah, yeah. movement, right? So you got to collect that over time and then begin to analyze it. Um, so I think that is that is critical for all data, um, especially customer success data, because to your other point, the goal is to be proactive so we don't have that negative whatever happen again, or even better, like if there was overwhelming success, what caused overwhelming success so you can drive raving fans, right? So I think so many times folks um, talk to the bad ticket and how it got resolved, et cetera, but forget that you can drive more success with overwhelming success, right? Yeah. And so how can you look at the same data and get two different outcomes. Like, wouldn't that be something? Instead of using a single data point for a single action, there are two opportunities for analysis. Um, one of the things our support team does is we will tag tickets that get raving responses. So we tag them as rave. And then on our quarterly business reviews, we look at them and not just for team harass, which we absolutely get. Like nothing makes us happier than you guys have the best support team in the business. Like, yes, we want to celebrate that. But we also want to look at what happened as part of those tickets yeah. Um, so that we can replicate that and make more raving fans. And I think something that's really important in that is it's one, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. <laughs> and two, so much of it is just about communication. So when you said, you know, you ran customer success and part of your work was to reach out to the customer, mm -hmm. I, I am confident of the people on this call, a solid 100%, maybe I'll take one of those off just in case there's a wild card on the call, um, that would agree that even if it's bad news, hearing it quickly is way more important oh, yeah. than the unknown, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought it was, so two, it was two years ago and Amazon East went down. And so we were down because- mm. We're on Amazon East. And uh, I sent out an email and a Twitter <laughs> tweet and uh, a Facebook message and a message in the, you know, all, all the places and said like, hey, we're down. This is when we can report back. Here's the status page you can look at, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I try not to spam our customers. They, they know they get weekly correspondence from me. I try not to do more than that. And, um, but this was kind of an all call, right? Like everybody out for that. And, uh, and I got three replies back. One, you guys rock. I literally just sent out a note saying that we were down for a bit. The second one was in lieu of 100% uptime, we want 100% communication. You guys killed it. And one that said, this is why we love you guys. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, that's not the response I was expecting to get, right? And we we're up 15 minutes later, so it didn't last long. Um, but I thought that was really interesting. And it tells the tale of communication around driving customer success that if you can communicate anything you're more likely to get a better outcome long term you know yeah than, than not knowing a thing um the other piece i like about what you said was like gauge first of like you have to you have to figure out where you are in order to move the needle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and interesting that i agreed like a good place to start is with tickets because that is something everybody has as yeah, exactly. a place to start. Do you, um, have you seen folks engaging with surveys beyond tickets, I, especially when it comes, I guess, to NPS, right? You're really aiming for how the, how not the project team, right? But the, the, the business owner feels about it. What do folks do along that line? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And with, with NPS net promoter score surveys, um, typically what we tell people is, you know, 
to use those on a periodic basis. So once a quarter or once every six months and target, um, you know, you could send them out to every single contact you have, but probably where you want to start and to, to focus is who are the main contacts? Like who would the people who kind of influencers. the influencers yeah you know the, the person who's the main point of contact to the client uh and also the you know the person with the the most say as uh actually one of our clients said to me you know they were describing the kind of mps campaign they're looking to run and he said you know if they've got the um power to hire us or fire us then we want to know what they think and <laughs> even if they don't necessarily touch our service desk every single day that might yeah. be someone slightly more junior more operational who does does that they want to know what those people think and mps is great for that because you don't use it or you it's best to use it not to say how did we do on this like one on a specific thing yeah maybe if you're an e-commerce and you sell to someone a couple of times a year you would do it then but if you're a you know recurring yeah. managed services thing just how are we doing you know um and then beyond that you know people always ask us about projects um and that's actually the probably the next well is the next big thing from smileback will be yeah. some kind of dedicated support for projects because there's a huge demand obviously for so many msp businesses yeah they've got the the ongoing um right. proactive support kind of side of things but obviously a, a big part for a lot of msps is like installations office moves onboarding that kind of work um so i know lots of people out there are wanting to do more around that or they already have they may have figured out some other way it's, there's like they may have used smile back for work around that might project be ticket that it's a special type that they put on a special board type of thing yeah or they might some people will will just uh not just some people will manually do it you know they they will just assign the task in their project like call them and ask them or you know maybe they've made their own they've used a survey builder survey monkey or something and mm -hmm. they just have a in the project plan each time like send the people this survey so that's definitely a, a place where lots of people want to know more about customer satisfaction well if you think about places you know part of csat is an indicator of potential for churn right mm. so you're trying to, to determine where your retention lies or where it doesn't lie and it's only one right it's it's we say the canary in the mine kind of thing like it's a good test yeah. um, but to use a business review or other call to test other areas where there you know any major shift is where people start to think mm -hmm. is this um is this the right company to be doing this work for me? Right. So if your help desk isn't complaining to you, you know, their help desk isn't complaining to you, et cetera. Um, but a large project goes sideways again, potential for churn. So you want to, you want to get eyes on that. So it's a good time to, to collect that information. But again, the reverse is true. You create raving fans because the project goes so well, you more opportunity for referrals, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of power that the story that um, that I told you and you said, yeah, I hear this all the time. I'd love to share. So uh, um, so I was on with one of our partners, Jill, on the Monday afternoon when we had released Smile Back on Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. So like we're like hot off the presses. And uh, and as I'm talking to her about, um, you know, the the event that we were going to do together, um, she said, wait we got a pop-up in the window when she logged in and it said smile and back integration, right? She's like, you smile back. So as we're talking through other things, she clicks over to the button integrates with smile back <laughs> and like, Oh, I, I just pushed the button, do this. Right. And my data is coming in. She said, this is tremendous. Like this is going to save me a ton of time because I just took all of my smile back data to my partner last week mm -hmm. for this reason. She, they, they always bring this and their business reviews the exec, the CEO of the company said that he had been hearing that the project team, like that there was some unrest within their services. And so he wanted to talk about that. And she said, absolutely. Like we'd want to right all the wrongs and pulled out the CSAT scores, which for the record, hundred yeah. percent. So literally every ticket that had been opened that quarter had a hundred percent and she said, all right, so take a look at this and let's talk through what you're hearing 
Because if we had gotten anything below 100%, we would have done exactly what you suggested. We would have called, we would have made it right, we would have fixed it. So if we don't, like we look at, we don't just collect these because we like smiley faces. We're actually using this to make a change. So if there's Beautiful. something we need to change, we're going to need some neutral faces or frowny faces to make an impact. Yeah, yeah. And he realized from that conversation that it was one person, squeaky wheel, maybe had a problem on his end. Um, and it ended up being a really good conversation, but because she had the data to share, it turned out great. And, but you said you heard similar. I've, all yeah, the I've had that almost exact story, um, several times over the years that, 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 and that's going back to what I was saying about, you know, the, the person who controls the purse strings, they might not be interacting directly with your help desk very much, if at all, they are only hearing the kind of you know um things that bubble up to them so that's why it's good to know yeah what does your main point of contact think what do your end users who are using you all the time think but it's also why it's good to bear in mind like what are the people above them you know who ultimately yeah. are going to sign off on that renewal in a year or two years time you know what do they think what can you tell them about your service to their company if they are only reviewing it once a year or twice a year or once a quarter whatever it is so um yeah i think that's that 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 might actually be a very common <laughs> um msp yeah. experience and really i you know brad who founded smileback he said one of the reasons he was so interested in customer feedback for msps was the experience of getting blindsided um yes. by by churning customers where he just you know, if he had just had that feeling, if 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 I had known sooner, if if I'd yep. known more about the little things, you know, six, 12, yep. 18 months ago, maybe I wouldn't be in this position now. And that, that was one of the things that drove the whole idea of making a, you know, uh, customer feedback tool for MSPs. So. so it reminds me of my Fitbit, which for the record yesterday told me it could start tracking AFib if I was interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But, and I thought, oh, I, let's hope I'm not having that problem now. Um, but the CSAT scores are those little Fitbit tracking pieces that mm. let you adjust, right? If I get bad sleep scores three days in a row, I will definitely do something to adjust that, right? Before I go three months and wonder why I can't drag myself out of bed in the morning. Um, and I think that's where connecting the dots with I see CSAT scores on the regular as the Fitbit of tracking along mm -hmm. versus at the business review, the net promoter, you know, like the, the, the larger conversations as the annual physical, right? But like yeah. you need to track your way toward that. If we only tracked the resting heart rate at the doctor's office for my husband, it would be off the chart because he's got white coat syndrome, right? Like, so he, he doesn't want to be there. He's always going to look like his heart's at some crazy new level. Um, so I think that's part of what the CSAT tool helps to do. Um, and as it relates to the bigger picture of when do we get ahead of those referrals, right? What do yeah. we, or, or the, you know, the renewal pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, I keep talking about the the kind of downsides and, and preventing them, but, you know, knowing who are the consistently happy people, you know, who, who, are, the, who are the people who are giving you positive reviews every time almost every time you know who are the ones who are writing going into depth and in, in into the comments every time those are the people you want to turn into your case studies white papers yeah. ask them for referrals and, and so take on, them you know. to a lunch and learn with prospects and have yeah, them yeah, talk yeah. about what we love about the folks yeah i i think that's you know we talked about there are ways to use csat internally and then there are ways to use it externally right so Internally, I feel like you can use it for KPIs, metrics, improving your practices, right? That's very much mm -hmm. the story you told. And externally, to be able to use that in business reviews as referral cases, right? To justify case studies. Again, those partners that can get you that are raving fans, I think, drive a ton of business. Um, when, you know, we talked about the QBRs and the canary in the mine. My mom always said, like, if you sweat the small stuff, there won't be the big stuff, right? So this, <laughs> that's kind of part of it in my mind. Yeah. Do you have other other stories or do you want me to show you what it looks like in Lifecycle? I think let's take a look at, at Lifecycle now, yeah. Okay. 
let me uh let me grab my screen here um so i recognize many names in the chat but some i do not so um as i jump into life cycle um let me first frame it a bit and then i'll show you what the integration looks like so i mentioned life cycle insights is a qbr tool um like Smileback, we integrate with ConnectWise. So we integrate with Manage. We also integrate with Autotask, Halo, Synchro, and IT Glue. Um, and in your conversation of like, let's collect data, let's understand it, let's act on it. We don't just do that with CSAT. If so, we mm. would be a CSAT tool. We're not a CSAT tool. We integrate with one, right? We also integrate with, so we integrate with Manage, um, in this case, again, the other PSAs, so that we can collect, understand, and help MSPs act on asset reporting, right? So we do warranty lookups, et cetera, to give insight into the tech piece of what you would deliver in a business review. But we also know that the human element is just as critical. And mm. that's where the CSAT piece is. And it's interesting because CSAT actually helps transition between the two. Because the reality of it is, if you look at my column, well, well let's look at these operating systems, where I've got all these red operating systems, well, if you've got that many Windows 7 machines, hopefully that's just my demo site, not your actual site. Your CSAT on tickets coming through on these assets could be a nightmare, right? Yeah. So CSAT, again, in the canary in the mine is a good combo platter of technology is causing human angst, right? And how mm -hmm. can we act on that to make it better? The other human piece element that we add is the ability to, to track you know, users, so who's not managed and is in Microsoft 365, and for the love of Pete, why is MFA disabled, right? There's some risk components. Uh, and then we also have assessments so that you can build recommendation roadmaps for your clients. Um, so I'm for sure um, short, <laughs> you know, not clicking all the buttons, but want folks who haven't seen us before get the idea mm -hmm. that our goal is to help align risk with yeah. the components that you talk about in a business review. Um, and part of the assessment piece is sometimes the assessment conversation is very much around human elements, right? And you do see that when you get an overall view of, is it hardware, security, continuity, right? Where are these pieces being impacted in your business? So we collect all of that information including the smile back information. So here's where we've got our smile back integration um, in order for you to drive those conversations at a business review. So I'm actually gonna let you speak to what they're looking at on the screen because this is actually, this is just your data in our platform with the integration. So do you wanna kind of speak to what they're looking at and what yeah. you look at from a customer success side? Yeah, sure thing, yeah. So. I know there's a lot of current smileback partners here. I'll just very quickly explain this for anyone who isn't familiar. So what we're looking at here is what we call CSAT, customer satisfaction survey from smileback. You tie this into your help desk ticket. So if it's, you know, ConnectWise manage, you'll be familiar. There's a status update template you can use when a ticket is moved to let's say resolved and very similar things exist in really any help desk software. So the idea is you embed a survey from smileback into that email template. When you close a ticket, the customer gets your, hey, this ticket's closed message. And along with that, in the same email, it's a very, very simple survey, three faces, a green smiley one, a yellow kind of, you know, line, like middle uh, one neutral. and a red, yeah, neutral, thank you. A neutral and happy one. And they click and as soon as they click, great, we've saved it, they're happy, we pull, the ticket information from the PSA. So we know who they are. They don't have to tell us again, this is my name, this is my company, this is what my my original question was. That's all pulled in from the ticket. And if they want, they can leave a comment. So it's really simple, it's really quick. It can, the idea is, is people can respond to this quickly and easily. And but more people do. We know, we know from people who were using some other type of survey or not using one, so using Smileback, they get a lot more responses. So what Lifecycle Insights are doing then is they are pulling this information in. So you can see this inside of Smileback itself, uh, but now you can easily, very easily get it into Lifecycle Insights. And as we can see here, you know, the first thing that would stick out to me is there's a neutral review there, the third one down from the top. Yep. And they've written it, it took a bit longer than expected. 
So just like I was saying earlier, you know, you'd go back to that contact, to that person, and you say, one, well, we're sorry, it took long and expected. Um, and two, you know, here's what we're going to do to do better in the future. And, you know, you can use that as an opportunity to talk to your team. What got, what happened here? Did we lose track of the ticket? Did our person have some blocker in getting the information or, you know, resolution they needed from someone else in the team or from a third party? Um, and you'd use that to follow up. And of course, that's kind of impacted your overall net CSAT score. If you had all greens, it would be 100. So that's, that's simple to understand. And then what I would always suggest to people is, you know, every week and every month or however it works for you, you know, have a target and say, well, we wanted to get 100 this week. We didn't get 100. Why not? Because of this neutral one. And you should, I, you know, I you should have, of course, already followed up on it, but this is the chance to then go with a little bit more remove. Okay, so what did we do again? Okay, was that the best resolution? Great, it was. Well, but what are we going to do next time to stop this happening? And, you know, use that as part of that conversation. So in a very quick way, that's basically what we're looking at here and what we would suggest doing. And I think the other piece of that is looking for patterns when you've stepped back, right? So yeah. if you've looked over time at, you know, 10 different neutrals, well, three of them were all about response time. <laughs> well, guess what? We know what we're going to talk about, right? We're going to we're going to find a way to address response time if we're starting to see a pattern there for sure. Um, and to your point, same data you can look at and smile back. Why would we then want to look at it in Lifecycle Insights? Well, I, mm -hmm. I mentioned at the beginning that um, you know I worked with a, a, one of our partners is an MSP who spent his time cobbling together the business review. And part of the problem, people will say, "Oh, sure, I can just go grab." this report from here and I can grab my asset list from my RMM and I can add these assets from an Excel spreadsheet and I can add users mm -hmm. from this. So first, I think it's obvious that takes extra time. But the other piece is when you bring to your client six different reports, like, well, if you weren't ADHD when you got here, you will be when you leave, right? You're having to readjust to what you're looking at instead of having a consistent way to look at the data. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. You can see I've added smile back to my one of my business reviews. So I add it as a, so this is report builder where you get to design a template that says, which reports would you like to present in your business review? You can download that report in a pretty formatted Word doc, or you can put it in presentation mode, which lets you present the clients the data. Now, we for sure, don't always talk through all of the line items. We talk through the assessments. We, of course, drive automated budget forecasts for clients, recommendations, et cetera. But if that conversation popped up, uh, yeah, folks are unhappy. Yep. Well, really? <laughs> because, because this is the smile back data that we're seeing. So to have all of this in one place um, and being able to deliver really, again, consistent looking reports with your mm -hmm. branded logo across all of the tools that you use. Um, it makes for a very palatable, professional looking presentation for folks. That's kind of the business review component of Lifecycle Insights. But the other piece that you have talked about is tracking customer success over time, right? Let's look at it this week. Um, you know, how are we doing on a day-to-day -day basis with customer success? So this is um, our customer success platform where you can see the right-hand column. We've got all of the, the smile back CSAT mm -hmm. data there. And it is one of the components that our customers are using to define as a health metric. So you can see smile back data that's pulling over natively. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and I talked about the fact that it's not the only piece of data that you're using, right? Yeah, of course. So how aligned they are to your standards would be a, a component, right? Because they're more secure if they're more aligned. If their org is having a change. So you mentioned you need to know what the, the, the check writers uh, feel about your platform, right? So you might have a score. Your CSAT scores are going along great. Your project managers love you. But if they got a new leadership team, you're at risk for churn, for sure, right? Like yeah. that's, that is something that people often bring new their their favorite IT providers with them. 
So we allow you to import smile back CSAT. If you want to use that as your sole score, that's fine. Or we can, um, you can also average it with other scores to drive, I don't know if for folks that caught it on that main screen, the color of this, right? So with the health being um, red, yellow, green, et cetera, um, what drives the, the coloring of happy customers green versus red customers? So if they have poor CSAT scores, you know, that, that wouldn't bode well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump back to the question in the Q&A. And I'm not sure if he means um, for you for Smile Back or Lifecycle Insights. So let me um, let me answer it on my end, and then we sure. can answer it on your end. Um, as part of Lifecycle Insights for a primary integration, we require either IT Glue, ConnectWise Manage, Autotask, Halo, Synchro. We pull companies, contacts, and asset information from there, and from there, as you can see. Here are our supplemental data pieces that you can add to that. So smile back is one of those pieces. And like I said, when I was on the phone with Jill, she pushed the button. There was a blue button that said integrate. She pushed the blue button. I was like, oh, well, it's, it's doing it already, right? That's how that happens. So that's how our data, that's how we're getting the smile back data. So the question's asking to smile back integrate with IT Glow. So I wasn't sure if they meant smile back or um, lifecycle insights. So I wanted yeah, to we smile back doesn't integrate IT Glow. It does integrate with Kaseya BMS. So if you do tickets from Kaseya BMS, you can use smile back CSAT with that. And you can also import uh, contacts from there for MPS surveys. So that's what we have in the kind of uh, Kaseya universe, but we don't have something direct with IT Glue. Are there other pieces that we have talked about in the integration conversations um, that, that you're thinking of, or is that, you know, no need to hold folks if, uh, <laughs> if they don't need holding. Um, so curious if folks have questions or if Evan, if there's anything else that you, uh, that you think we want to cover before we kind of summarize and give ways to, for folks to reach out to us. Um, no, I mean, I think we've, you know, we've, we've really covered it a lot of it. I think one more thing I want to add, um, something you said reminded me is QBRs or whatever kind of business review, you know, face-to-face -face, live contact you have. Um, there's a good virtuous cycle between those and customer feedback, because if you act on customer feed, if you collect and act on customer feedback, that gives you good data, right? To bring to QBR, just like the story you were talking about. Yeah. Um, but then the fact that you brought talk about customer feedback in the QBR then shows you are listening to it. So then people think, oh, okay, well, they actually listen to this and they do things with it. So we should keep replying and we should keep telling them whether it's through the surveys or, or just by shooting you an email, you know, whatever way it is. It, it, if you show you listen and act on it, people got obviously a lot more incentive to, to take part, right? And to communicate with you and maybe even become more proactive and, and go beyond just clicking on CSAT. Obviously it's great. It's what um, gives me a job, but uh, proactively telling you things just by email is good as well, right? And very valuable. So that, that's a good that's a good place to be. And because you know, right, we've all had an experience where like my cable, my my uh, broadband provider, I would do almost anything to avoid speaking to them because I know they're not <laughs> going to help me. <laughs> I, you know, it's not going to be an amazing conversation. It's, no, it's, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a good experience. So I, I honestly, most of the time, I just let it slide. But um, you know, you don't want to be in that position, right? You want to be in a yeah. position where it's yeah. like, even if they're annoyed, even if things have gone wrong, things will go wrong. If they feel like, well, you know what, I'm going to tell them because they. They'll They're going to listen and I'll try and do something. And like you were talking about with the outage, right? That's that's a good, healthy relationship. It's not one where everything is always good, but it's it's one where each side trusts each other to work yeah. through when it's not good. Um, I will tell you, <laughs> in my working with my former cable, <laughs> with my old house <laughs> provider, uh, the letter involved the words demonstrably egregious actions on their end, right? It was, it was pretty aggressive by the time I was done with them. It was simply terrible. Um, yeah. Anyway, they got a new manager in place that wanted to right their wrongs. So they called me 
blah, blah, I would be VIP, whatever that meant, et cetera. But they did try to take action on that. So the next time something went down, my husband called and he said, oh, I hung up because it said they were sending me to the queue and I'd have to wait in line. I said, nope, 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 call back, watch what happens. And it rerouted to the queue. And then it said, you're a preferred customer and put him first in line. He's like, wait, when did we get, when did that happen? I was like the demonstrably egregious um, conversation I had with them was, was what got there. So you're right. If people are looking at it and taking action on it, you will see different outcomes, but that just builds that trust relationship. I think so much, so much more. Um, I'm going to throw our LinkedIn um, profiles up for folks mm -hmm. if they want to reach out to us and are, um, uh, you know, just care how to connect with us. If you have any questions, again, feel free to put it in the chat. So this is how you can get a hold of Evan um, mm -hmm. or check out smileback.com. So you have a free trial. Can you tell me what the details are on that? So when, when yeah. my psychos ask about it, I can tell them. Yeah, so you can go on smileback.com, you can create a new Smileback account, and from whenever you collect your first reviews, you can then, you have two weeks free. Um, it's completely, um, you know, no obligation. The only thing that happens at the end of two weeks is we say, hey, trial's ended, would you like to subscribe? And we start dialing back the functionality. So you don't I have to- I think like really aggressive selling, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to- um, put in any payment details, agree to anything, you know, like that first. You can also have a demo, you know, if you prefer to speak to someone live, um, my wonderful colleague Donna, you know, will take you through how it works, help you get set up, you know, um, answer all your questions. So, yeah. Perfect. And then um, if you're interested in checking out Lifecycle Insights or connecting with me on LinkedIn, would love that. Um, we also have a free day, a 30 day. So ours is a 30 day trial. We will ask for a credit card, um, but we obviously don't charge it for 30 days. Uh, and then it's lifecycleinsights.io um, slash pricing. Uh, and again, if you want a demo, you can book one right on the site there. And one of us would be happy to hop on a call and walk through it and talk through, you know, if uh, how, to, how to help you deliver the QBR your mm -hmm. customer deserves, as we like to say. I see another chat. Um, you will get a link to the recording, yes. So as soon as it's done processing, I'll post it onto YouTube and ship that over to everybody here and you're welcome to share it out. Any other I'll, questions from folks? I'll put it in the, uh, it'll be in the next Smileback monthly newsletter as well. So if people miss or just don't get around to the first email in a couple of weeks, they'll get it from us as well. I'm confident everyone reads every single one of our emails that we send out. <laughs> Actually, I know sometimes they do because I'll be in an event that I'll say, wait, you're morning at Lifecycle Insights? She emails me every, every <laughs> Yep, I do. All right. Well, thanks all for joining. Hope uh, hope you enjoyed the Thank time. You. I enjoyed chatting with you, Evan. I can chat yeah. for success all day long. So I appreciate the conversation. No, thanks so much for hosting us. And yeah, uh, thanks everyone. Have good ones.